Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World, welcome to Choose Temper. In this video I'm going to do a book review for you of All the Queen's Jewels 1445 to 1548 Power, Majesty and Display by Nicola Tallis. Now, I am someone who loves collecting vintage and antique jewellery. I've got some of mine on today. Um, and I've also got a special pair of earrings on today, but I'll talk to you about those in a second. And so when I knew about this book, I was rather intrigued because I love jewellery. I love collecting jewellery. I love wearing jewellery. Um, I, as you know, love to talk about fashion and um, jewellery is such a huge part of it and I think fashion in itself is such an expression of who you are and your identity and saying who you are to the world um, and I think that hasn't changed and I think for hundreds and hundreds of years a great way for people to express themselves and particularly I suppose women in a position of influence and sort of power but not necessarily what they would like to achieve can say a lot through jewellery and that's even done in the royal family today um you know uh, you know the queen may the our late queen might have wore a particular brooch which may have meant something or princess catherine of wales um she may wear a particular um necklace or a pair of earrings gifted her by someone else and that may mean something and it's us kind of piecing together what these things may mean and so I was really excited to hear about this book and I can tell you it certainly didn't disappoint. Now I've read a couple of Nicholas Harris's books before, I've read um, her first book which was Crown of Blood which is a biography of Lady Jane Grey Oh, that book broke my heart. <laughs> I've also read the second book that she wrote which was Elizabeth's Rival which was on the kind of love triangle almost between Lettuce, Elizabeth I and Robert Dudley um, and the difficulty that all three of them found themselves in. Um, that was a really wonderful read um, and I highly recommend both of them. I haven't read her third book which was on Margaret Beaufort but um, this one I just I couldn't resist getting my hands on. Um, it's perhaps not what you necessarily would think it is. Um, lots of times when I buy books that are on vintage and antique and historic jewellery, you know, they're big kind of coffee table books and there's lots of wonderful colour images in really nice kind of glossy paper. That's not what this book is. This book is more of an informative, almost academic type book on the history of um, jewels and jewellery rather than a coffee table type book to you know, sit on your coffee table and to flick through every now and then. This is an actual reading book, as you can see there. I mean, there are images, black and white images, but you'd find them, you know, um, throughout the book, but it is predominantly text-based. Now, I found the layout of this book quite interesting because it's almost like um, essays. So for instance, one of my favourite kind of chapters was The Wills of the Queens of England, 1445 to 1548. And we talk about um, the wills of the particular wives that we're discussing, um, you know, what was left to who. So for instance, Catherine of Aragon left a, do an, um, a necklace to her daughter, uh, Mary Tudor. At the end, we get a little conclusion like you would in an essay, and then we get the notes straight after. I love notes <laughs> and actually I really appreciated it being done in this form. I found it kind of easier to, to take on and I kind of read these almost as if they're like short stories. You know, I'd read one and pick it up for a bit and then I'd put it down and um, from the notes I then sometimes went and did a little bit of research looking into the just the, the source of the notes. Um, I have always enjoyed Nicola Tallis's writing style and she blends herself wonderfully to like this type of writing. It's as I said, kind of bordering on that academic. So we're, we're moving kind of slightly away from popular history, but it's still a really readable history book. Um, but it's focusing on the power that jewels and jewellery have while looking at the primary sources that we do have available. So Nicholas Haas looks at the wills and the inventory and portraits and what do we have at the time to then explain to us what the jewellery that these uh, fascinating women at the time, what were they wearing and what did it mean? 
something I loved about this was the inventories that Nicola Tallis, you know, that she, she could have just, you know, written that Catherine Howard had so many sapphires. Sapphires in the Tudor period meant this. Um, but no, she puts a whole <laughs> pages of tables in there and I thought it was absolutely wonderful and I just kept going over them going, oh, Jane Seymour had a lot, didn't she? And I'm <laughs> doing all this. So this is a book that I really love and really appreciate. It's a bit different to the norm, but one that I think is certainly well worth picking up, particularly if you, like me, are a fan of learning about jewels and the history of jewellery and the people that wore them. If you're interested, of course, just in general of the Six Wives of Henry VIII, then I think you'll really like this because they are mentioned in there a lot, as well as um, late medieval queens as well, because of course this book starts in 1445 and we don't get the Tudor period for another 40 years. Now when I knew I wanted to do this review of this book, I thought, you know what, I'm going to put on some of my favourite pieces of jewellery that I love wearing. So obviously I wear my wedding rings and my engagement rings and stuff, but then also I've got a couple of um, recent-ish rings that um, my husband bought me for my birthday. So I have this one here, which isn't very old, but this one that does have a bit of age to them and I love wearing them. I, I love buying jewellery that's like secondhand but good quality. I've stopped buying so much jewellery that's like the cheap cheaper metals and cheaper bits but and then have like instead save that money and buy like one piece that is in, in this case gold and will last a lot longer particularly because I wear jewellery all the time but I thought for this video just a piece of fun jewellery is this one <laughs> and I love these so much um I might actually just take them out my ears so you can see closer up so they are Elizabeth the <laughs> first. They are handmade and I think they just look so fun. Um, they didn't cost a lot at all but I love her so much so yeah I bought uh, a pair of those <laughs> especially to talk about the jewellery. So there we have it that is my review of All the Queen's Jewels 1445 to 1548 by Nicola Tallis. Definitely well worth reading if you're interested in the history of jewellery or the history of just womanhood and queenship and any of the six wives of Henry VIII or people like Anne Neville for instance because she's also mentioned in this book. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know if you have read this book and if so what you think of it. If you haven't read it yet let me know. Are you going to pick it up now? Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care and I shall see you soon for the next one. Bye for now.